Lenten lunchtime lesson with Father Andrew of the Society of the Divine Compassion. Good Friday, the school of suffering. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lived by the power of God. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 4. As St. Paul looked back upon our Savior's life and all that he had heard about it from the apostles and had learned by meditating upon it during these years in Arabia, when he was thinking things out, it seemed to him a life crucified in weakness and yet mysteriously living in power. In this passage of the epistle, he continues, for we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. There is a wonderful text in the epistle to the Hebrews. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Here we are told of a learner, a lesson, and a school. Only the Holy Spirit can enable us to, to, uh, to take in the wonder of that text because the learner is God. The lesson is obedience and the school is suffering. What is an amazing thing that is? How could God learn anything? We often resent being taught, yet God, the only perfectly free being, learned obedience by the things which he suffered. We are allowed to overhear our Lord praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and actually to see the lesson being learned. He first of all prays, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. The cup is one of heartbreaking disappointment. The Jewish nation, the most religious of the time, his own chosen people had excommunicated him. The common people who had heard him gladly all, all allowed themselves to be tricked into crying, crucify him, crucify him. The Roman nation has for all time a wonderful record of justice, but it was a Roman procreator who delivered our Lord to be crucified. He was betrayed by one friend, denied by another, forsaken by all. His cup of suffering was filled to the brim. He prays on, and presently he is able. And here we see him learning to say, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. The cup of treachery has become the cup of duty. It is not yet his will, but it may be the Father's will. And if it is his, he will drink it. He prays on, and we are told that an angel came to him, strengthening him. Then there's a sound in the silent moonlit garden. They have come to take him. He rises, and now he has learned his lesson. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? He says, it is the same cup to begin with the cup of Judas, then the cup of duty, and now it is the cup of the father, the cup of power. He, the representative man, is behaving as God. He is those two things, the revelation of God in human nature, the revelation of man in perfect obedience. He came to this earth to reveal to us what it is to be the Son of God and give us the power to be that very thing, children of God, not only as all of us are by creation, but children of God in whom he is well pleased because our Father's will is our will. In a mysterious way, the life of Christ our Lord has to be repeated in each of one of his children. Each of us has to know what it is to be tempted, to go through great weakness, and at last to die. We also have to learn obedience by the things which we suffer. Yet we may know what it is to live by the while by the power of God. St. Paul was a brave man. He tells us of the number of times he was stoned, imprisoned, and shipwrecked, that he suffered from false brethren, and all the things which came upon him daily. But he had a special trial, which he calls a thorn in the flesh. He tells us how he, like his master, went thrice times to the Lord, beseeching that it might be taken from him and received the mysterious answer, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So even as our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified through weakness and lives by the power of God, we have to pass through this life, its temptations, its crosses, its difficulties, and meet them all in obedience, face them all in faith, and live by the power of God in heaven.